everyone, this is Tamara from ShelfAddiction.com, and welcome to episode 64. Today on Book Chat Live, I'm talking all about the highly anticipated young adult fiction reads of 2017. If you're listening live, feel free to chime in and let me know what you're most looking forward to reading this year in the YA realm. If you enjoyed today's episode, please show your support by rating the podcast and leaving a positive review. The podcast can be found on the Spreaker app, iTunes, Google Play Music, the Stitcher app, and more. If you want to comment on something you've heard during today's episode, you can leave a comment below or you can find me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. If you'd like to email in feedback or questions, feel free to reach out to me at info at shelfaddiction.com. Hey everyone, how are you this evening? I hope that you are keeping warm wherever you are. Hopefully it's not raining on you too bad or snowing on you too bad. If you're on the other side of the world, then hopefully you're enjoying that sun or even in the south. You know, my PCS co-host was chilling in the the warm weather by the Keys of Florida and I was feeling pretty jealous last week. So um, for all you guys enjoying the sun, um, I hope you don't uh, take for granted that it's summer where you are because I'm really missing that right now. So today I'm here with a really fun topic. I always like to look at the top choices and the top highly anticipated or talked about books of the year. And of course, since young adult is still very high on the radar, we're going to look at young adult titles, a young adult fiction titles. Now my um, results came from goodreads.com. I have the link in the show notes if you'd like to check it out. The books I'm going to cover today are based on votes tallied as of today and I'm going to go over the top 15. But before we jump into that I want to know what you guys are reading. If you're listening live and would like to share with me what you're reading right now please do. I will try to answer all comments that I see and in the meantime, I will tell you what I am reading right now. Um, I'm, as always, I'm listening to one audio book and I am reading one book. And on audio right now, I am listening to Ruthless, which is the first book in the Lawless series by Lexi Blake. And this is a pretty good listen so far. It's definitely adult um, contemporary romance, I'd say. And it's fun. Uh, the, the ratings are pretty good. And I'm, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So if you like contemporary romance, it's definitely, I think, a good one to check out. As far as reading, I am reading the second book in the Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy by Sarah J. Moss. And that title is A Court of Mist and Fury. It is a young adult fantasy title. And it started off with a retelling of um, Beauty and the Beast, essentially. So book one was a retelling. And obviously, now that we're into book two, things are transforming a little more. And it's a really fun read. So definitely check those out if you're looking for something new to read. So that was the perfect segue into my top 15 based on votes. Because the number one, (laughs) the number one slot is actually taken by the same author, Sarah J. Moss. And that is the third book in this trilogy. And that is called A Court of Wings and Ruin. Now, like I mentioned, this is a trilogy and I'm on book two. So of course I have this on my to read list as well. So it's a fantasy and it's technically... It is categorized as young adult. In my personal opinion, it's more new adult because of the um, intimacy and sex and other things that are going on in this book. I'm not so sure it's technically young adult, although the um, the publishers are definitely putting it in the young adult bucket. And that is number one on the list with over 65,000 ratings. So people are really anticipating this book and it comes out May 2nd and I am one of those as well. You guys, if you are listening and you'd like to comment on one of these titles or if you'd like to tell me what you're most looking forward to, feel free to shout it out and um, I will definitely respond to that as well. So the second book is actually another book by Sarah J. Moss and that is untitled. It's untitled. So I almost wanted to skip it because it's untitled, but I won't. It is the sixth book in the Throne of Glass series. She is really popular right now. Again, it's fantasy. Dare I say the content might be new adult as well, although I haven't read that series. And that is coming in at over 58,000 ratings. So 
she's definitely killing it. People are really looking forward to her books and it has 2017, but there is no month. The next one is Carve the Mark, which is the first book in the Carve the Mark series by Veronica Roth. We all know Veronica Roth from the Divergent series and, you know, some people loved it. Some people hated it. I personally loved Divergent. I also liked Insurgent. I didn't love Allegiant, which was the final book, but, you know, I think... I've been hearing, uh, I guess, conflicting opinions about Carve the Mark so far. It just came out on January 17th, and there's the team, you know, the camp that loves it and the camp that hates it. I have yet to start it, but we'll see where I shake out when I post my review. But this is, again, young adult fantasy. And actually, I notice um, two things about this list before I move on is that it is heavily laden with fantasy, um, you know, titles and a few retellings sprinkled in. So if you love young adults and you love fantasy genre, then you definitely want to hear this list. You'll, there'll be some really great reads for you to add to your TBR list. Okay. So while we're talking about Carve the Mark, it should also be known that Carve the Mark is actually the February book club read for the Shelf Addiction Online Book Club. Yes, I do have a book club that's on Goodreads. So if you'd like to check that out, just head on over to Goodreads and search Shelf Addiction Book Club and you will find it. And you can read Car- Carve the Mark with us and talk with us about it on the message boards and all that fun stuff. So if you're looking for an online book club, feel free to check that out because we are reading the number three pick, you know, in a few weeks actually. So the next one is uh, Caravelle, which is the first book in a series or trilogy. I'm not sure which one it is at this point, but the author is Stephanie Garber. And I have heard lots of buzz about this book myself since summer of last year. Well, I actually got the, um, uh, advanced readers copy at book expo america last year and obviously that was in may so people have been talking about this book tremendously reviewing it early reviews the whole nine so this came in at number four and it is of course young adult fantasy and it comes out on january 31st so you don't have to wait that much longer for it and this comes in with over 49,000 ratings and uh, the the ratings from the good you know the early reviews are very good so definitely I would check this one out if you are looking to read a book with a lot of buzz behind it this is a good option So number five on the list is Flame in the Mist, which is the first book again in a series. We are just loving series and trilogies right now still. So the trend of that is still alive as well. The author is Renee Abde. I believe that's how you pronounce it. A-H-D-I-E-H. I apologize if I mispronounce that. But she was well known for her book, The Wrath in the Dawn, which was a retelling of 1,001 uh, Nights. So if you guys know that tale, then that's what The Wrath in the Dawn was about. Of course, reimagined in her own way. Now, this one is a young adult fantasy title. So Flame in the Mist, I'm not sure if it's a retelling. It hasn't been tagged as a retelling, so I'm not 100% sure, but it wouldn't surprise me if it has some historical fiction elements as well, because uh, it seems like that's what she was writing her in her previous series. So that definitely is something you should definitely check out. And also it's a good option if you like to read um, books by diverse authors. So this is also a great um, option to read for that category also. So the next one on the list is Always and Forever, which is actually the third book in a series. The series is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I have not read anything by Jenny Han, but I have heard lots of good things about her. I've heard a lot of good things about this series, actually. I haven't gotten to it, um, but, you know, it's definitely... Uh, high on my list if I can ever make room on uh, for it and this is a contemporary YA it's one of the very few contemporary YA titles on the list 
Actually, I think that might be the only contemporary YA title on the list. So if you're not into fantasy or science fiction, then this might be a good series for you to check out. Um, So yeah. So up next is Lord of Shadows, which is the second book in the Cassandra Clare, the Dark um, Artifacts series. And of course, this is the Shadow Hunters world. She did a spinoff, of course, of the, the Shadow Hunters books. And this is where we are. So the first book came out last year. This one comes out um, May 23rd. And of course, it's fantasy and it's YA. And if you love Shadow Hunters, then you'll probably enjoy this. Now, I did read all of the Shadow Hunters books. I did not start this series yet. It's kind of just been chilling on my shelf for a year. Um, but I do want to get to it. I mean, I've heard some good things about it. But honestly, I'm surprised this rakes, rakes, rated excuse me, so high on the list only because I haven't really been hearing, you know, that much chatter about it. You know, I know this series has its fans, you know, the diehards that will read this about this world until Miss Cassandra Clare decides not to anymore. And that's all good. So definitely check it out if you're a fan, if you're enjoying the Shadow Hunters and you love the Shadow Hunters then definitely you'll want to check this out. It comes out in May, like I said. Now, you know, on a side note, you guys know I watch a bunch of TV. I want to know what you guys think about the second season of The Shadow Hunters on Freeform. You know, I'm not going to talk about this on PCS because this is definitely not a show that my co-host on PCS watches. But I would like to know what you Shadow Hunter fans think about um, how they're doing with season two. There were a lot of things that they were raving about going into this season. They were, you know, patting themselves on the back (laughs) for making it feel a little older, a little darker, and not so cheesy like season one. Do you think they accomplished those goals? Do you think that the TV version of the Shadow Hunters, you know, series is going in the right direction? I'd love to hear your feedback. You know, I don't want to talk bad about them or, or anything, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's all right. I'm watching it, obviously. I keep hoping that things will, you know, suddenly have a, a awesome uptick, but so far, not yet. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. So I'll move on to the next book, which is um, the Galton School for the Vigilantes. Hmm, that sounds interesting. And this is book one from the Galton Trilogy by Marissa Meyer. (laughs) Now, you guys should know Marissa Meyer. If you're reading Young Adult, you should definitely know her name. She is well known for the Lunar Chronicle series. I thoroughly enjoyed that series. I just loved it. And I also recently reviewed on my YouTube channel um, her most recent release um, that came out in December that was called Heartless. Now, Heartless was a standalone, which was kind of cool. And I'm not going to get into what I felt about Heartless. I'll let you go on over to my YouTube channel and check that out if you're interested. But she's definitely bringing it with something a little bit different. And I don't think this is a retelling. So I'm very curious to see how this is going to work out for her. It comes out November 7th. So it's very far away. And obviously it is a fantasy young adult title because, you know, that's her wheelhouse. And, you know, she thrives in that place. So I definitely think it's I'm excited for it. So this is definitely on my to read list and we'll see how that works out. All right, we'll do one more before I talk a little bit about what's going on on the website right now. And that's going to be War Cress by Mary, let's see, what's her name? Marie Lou. My goodness, I really slaughtered that. So Marie Lou is known for Um, her legend series. I have not read that series, but I have heard lots of stuff about it. And, you know, she's, you know, she's gotten her props. She's got her fans, definitely. So I definitely understand why this rated high on the list. It's science fiction and it's young adult, obviously. And I do enjoy a good science fiction read. So I probably will be adding this to my list because sometimes with all the fantasy, you know, most fantasy has a really heavy romance um 
something to it but sometimes with sci-fi the romance is put on the back burner and you know the guts of the story is a conflict obviously with this title war cross um I think that's what we're going to get so that should be interesting I don't know if it's in space or not it probably is uh because that's kind of been on trend lately as well but I'm definitely looking forward to this and it comes out October 3rd It's time for the Blog Rundown. Find out what's new on ShelfAddiction.com. All righty, let's talk about what's going on on the blog. So it's been a while since I've done a rundown for the blog, but I have some fun stuff going on right now. I have two giveaways running and I have a few book giveaways coming this month. So you definitely want to subscribe via the RSS feed or email or something so that you don't miss these giveaways. Right now, I have two giveaways running, and I'm going to keep running them until I don't feel like doing it anymore. I'm going to do it every month until I get tired of doing it. And those two giveaways are, the first one is the genre of the month. You guys know I'd love to ask for the genre of the month. I do so in every podcast episode in the text but I need to get back to asking you guys verbally, but that's what I'm doing. So if you head on over to genre of the month, it's on my blog. There's a nice um, little photo on the side column. And if you click there, there's a genre of the month. And right now it is romance until the end of this month. If you go there and leave a comment and enter the raffle copter in exchange for giving your recommendation for the genre of the month, you can be entered to win a $10 Amazon e-gift card. So no matter where you are in the world listening, you can leave your comment on that genre of the month and you'll be entered to win. Now the genre of the month, I think you do have to leave a, um, a voicemail so I can use your clips on the show. I would really love to hear your feedback and, you know, be entered to win a Amazon gift card, you know, in exchange. And you can buy books, audiobooks, whatever you want. You know, we're all Amazon fiends. You know it. <laughs> and the second giveaway is a bookish top 10. That is a new feature I've added. I'm really looking to see, you know, what real people think as far as rating books in a top 10 way. So what you would do is you would go to the blog post. Again, there is a graphic on the sidebar and you would leave your top 10 for whatever the topic is of the month. And actually this month is highly anticipated, you know, YA reads. And I do want to hear what you guys have to say, not, you know, on a smaller scale, not necessarily what I'm doing with good reads, but I want to see what my readers and listeners like. So if you leave a comment with your, you know, choice, and this is actually just leaving a blog post comment. And if you, you know, confirm that comment on the raffle copter that's in the post, you can also be entered to win a $10 Amazon electronic gift card. And that as well is open internationally. So if you are all about Amazon and want some, you know, credit, some $10 credits, definitely you'll want to leave your feedback in exchange for an entry. And there are also a few other ways you can enter after you leave your comments if you would like to gain more points. So if you follow on Twitter or follow on Instagram or YouTube, I think there's a few other ways that you can earn a couple extra points. And also you can tweet about it. You can tweet about it once a day if you like, just to let other people know that it's there for them to leave their comments as well. All right, let's get back to this list. We're a little over halfway through, so I figure we might as well just punch through it. Again, if anyone's listening and you'd like to leave some comments, please do. I'd love to talk to you. Um, If you want to leave a comment afterward, please do that as well in the comments below or send me an email or a tweet or all that good stuff. All right, so the next book is the third book in a series or a trilogy. I'm not sure. I'm not really familiar with this. I've heard about the first book, but I have yet to listen to it. It's been recommended to me by one of my audiobook friends, and I haven't gotten to it yet. But this book is A Conjuring of Light, which is the third book in the Shades of Magic series or trilogy by V.E. Schwab. Now, um, again, this is fantasy and YA, and this actually comes out February 21st, and obviously it's about magic, and I do love magic, um, 
it's different and it's fun. You know, right now I'm reading about Faye. I usually read about, you know, vampires and werewolves. So it's really fun to kind of break out of that and read about some magic sometimes. So I'm definitely intending to get to this series. Hopefully I can do so sooner than later. But if you've been reading this series so far, I'd like to see, you know, are you looking forward to the third book? Are you enjoying this? Let me know. I'd love to hear some other recommendations for this trilogy before I have to squeeze it in somewhere. So let me know, you guys. So the 11th book, yes, we are on 11, we are almost there, (laughs) is Winter Song, and that is by S.J. Jones, and that is a fantasy retelling, and of course it's YA, but this is so unique because it's not a retelling of a, um, you know, a fable or a tale, it's actually a retelling based off of a movie and you never guess what movie. Oh my goodness. It's like a retelling of the Labyrinth movie. You know that movie with da- um, David Bowie? I think the Bowie, David Bowie. Oh goodness. Can't say his name either. I used to love that when I was a kid. I used to, you know, watch the little creatures and sing the little stupid songs. Oh my gosh. I love that movie. The Labyrinth was the business. So the fact that someone has, you know, put their own spin on it and wanted to tell their own version of the Goblin King story in a book. Oh, I'm all about it. I have definitely added this to my TBR list. Winter Song has gotten pretty good reviews so far with about over 2,300 ratings with an average of four. So definitely people are enjoying it. People who have gotten their hands on an early copy, they're, they're loving it. So definitely I see why this is on the list. Next up, book 12, is the third book in the Illuminae Files. It is untitled, but I'm going to bring it up anyway because I seriously loved Illuminae and Gemina. And that is by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, I believe his name is. And this is definitely science fiction and it's YA, but it is also maybe on the cusp of new adults. Um... I just seriously loved both of the first two books on audiobook. If you decide to try this out, I definitely recommend them on audiobook. And if you like to read it, that's fine. And it's a very unique style book. So it's a series of dossiers, right? So you have, you know, think, think, you know, let's see, transcripts and maps and emails and voicemails and, you know, so it's told in a non, the story's told in a non-traditional way. So if you're about non-traditional books and, you know, things that are visually appealing, I think you'll uh, like this. And I definitely can see how this hit the list for sure. So number 13 is Hunted by Megan Spooner. I have not heard of this title and I have not heard of this author, but it definitely has a lot of ratings so far. I'm sure that the readers are really liking the, you know, the early copies that are out. It is definitely a YA fantasy retelling. And I believe it's another Beauty and the Beast retelling. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. All these Beauty and the Beast retellings, I mean, some are hit, some are miss, obviously, but you know, a lot of people are looking forward to it. It's out in March, March 14th to be exact. So, you know, if you love retellings and you love the Beauty and the Beast story, give this one a try. Let me know if it's good. So the 14th one is Strange the Dreamer, which is the first book in the Strange the Dreamer series or trilogy. I don't know which one. And the author is Lainey Taylor. Now, I love Lainey Taylor. She is well known for the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. Now, I really enjoyed that trilogy so much. It was another one that I really just loved on audiobook. I could just gush all over it. It was amazing. This is so, you know, she writes high fantasy or epic fantasy in the YA genre. So what that means is, you know, you're not only going to just, you're not dealing with vampires and werewolves, you're dealing with angels and demons and, you know, things that are a little bit more, a little bit more, (laughs) just more everything, you know, probably happens in a land that's not our own, you know, it's not in the real world, it's made up, which requires a huge amount of, um, 
skill with world building and she has that talent i'm telling you if you are curious about her and you want to check her out before march 28th when this book comes out definitely listen to daughter of smoke and bone on audiobook you will love it and the last book (laughs) the 15th book that i'm going to mention is by an author that was already on this list and that is marissa meyer and this is wire and nerves volume one now you guys i mentioned the um, lunar chronicle series earlier this is a part of the lunar chronicle series i believe this is Ico's story um and i think it's Ico, or maybe it's someone else i'm not sure but i think it's Ico, and it's definitely different because it's a graphic novel this is the only graphic novel on the list in the top 15 And if you like graphic novels, I think you should definitely check this out. Um, It comes out on January 31st. I don't really love graphic novels, but I loved that series enough to possibly check it out. But we will see. Let me know if you guys end up getting that graphic novel and what you think about it. Um, I would love to know if it's worth it the purchase. So that's all I have for today. I hope you guys didn't mind me rambling about these books, but you know, I gotta love talking about books and especially when they're highly anticipated and talked about books of which I've added a good portion of these books to my TBR list. If you have any of these books on your TBR list, let me know which ones you're looking forward to. If you decided to add some to your list based off of you know, the podcast today, let me know. I'm curious to see what you've added. So that's it. I'm going to let you guys go. You have a wonderful night. Thanks for listening. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you for tuning in and downloading today's episode. If you are enjoying the book chat episodes and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. First, you can head on over to iTunes and give a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. You can follow the Shelf Addiction podcast on Spreaker, the only place where you can listen live and get broadcast notifications so that you never miss a live episode. Most importantly, you can share the podcast with friends and family that love books and audiobooks. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.